What's up, guys? It's the Bad Wolf. I know it's been a minute or two since I made a video, but uh, let's get back to where we were running at last. All right. So this particular video is going to be about the DOT or the DMV, whatever they call it in your particular state. And um, we're going to see what their response was to a letter I sent them. So uh, without further ado, let's see, here. let's get a little, little light here, illuminate a little bit better. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody out there for watching the videos and for subscribing. It shows you guys really are getting this information. So once again, this is a lifelong work that is finally being appreciated. So thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the donations. Uh, thank you for people in the bad wolf section, the private wolf pack. Thank you for joining that. Uh, for those who haven't, you can support monthly and get information on behind the scenes and uh, some more of my just thoughts and whatever else um, by joining that on my main channel. Go to the main page, click on the join, and then, um, you know, make it happen, Cap. All right, so for those people who don't know, my backup channel is the Bad Wolf Media channel, okay? So we've got that one. I also have about five others. Um, those will slowly be worked on over the years, but the main ones are going to be this one and the Bad Wolf Media Channel. If you guys want to know if I'm on any social platforms, uh, first of all, I am. Secondly, do not get scammed because I never reach out to people, per, uh, uh, you know, first. Um, and even if I do have the time, you guys do message me, I may or may not be able to get back to you. So please don't take it personal and please don't send anybody any money pretending to be me or anybody else on the Internet. For the love of God. Okay, um, also uh, we have a Telegram group and that one is called the Bad, uh, Bad Wolf Unincorporated. So Bad Wolf Unincorporated on Telegram. Otherwise, yes, I'm on Instagram and TikTok now and whatever else, launching videos. Some of them are just me and my normal life. Some of them I'm spouting information, um, which I'm going to be utilizing Bad Wolf Media Channel to be able to talk about everything. This particular channel, I, I focus just on this stuff. That channel is going to be about everything. So I'll be looking forward to that. And yes, I have not forgotten about you people out there who want me to do the seminars on court and health and whatever else. Okay, I'm just trying to get the format down. How am I going to do it? It'll Will it always be lives? It'll be a combination. Who am I going to have on the show, et cetera. So I'm never really planning this, guys. I just, I'm living. This is literally me living. I'm just, I just, as I move, I go and I do. So once again, this is about the DOT, and uh, we're going to go from there. So as always, if you guys want to get some of the merch, information should be down below. Otherwise, it will be on blacksite32.com, which is where you can get all of my videos and extra stuff and offers and promos and discounts, services, notary, and you know uh, mortgage audit solutions for mortgage fraud, credit card fraud how to fight that. Um, all that information is there. So check it out. And don't forget the free files. All right. We've got lots of free files in there. I'm going to try to upload some more as soon as possible. And if I can, I will double what's on there coming soon. So it just takes time to read and do all this. I'm doing this now full time and still doesn't seem like I have enough time. Like I might need to, uh, you know, get an assistant or something at one point in time. I don't know. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to open up my email. I'm going to read to you guys um, what their response was, because I haven't even checked it out myself. OK. All right. So. I sent them a letter. And this letter basically went like this. Hello, to whom it may concern. I've come across information I'm trying to research and apply for and obtain proven factual information. Below is an excerpt of House Bill, of a House Bill so passed that mentions right to travel and in compliance with all safety commissions to provide a, a non-commercial traveler ID and exemption decal. Um, so for those people who didn't see the video, it was House Bill 1778-FN-A-Local. All right. Now, I since made this video, and this is in the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire, in 2018, submitted this 
piece of legislation to basically allow for those people who are driving privately and not commercially the ability to have a an ID for that reason and a decal to put on their car. Now, from what I understand after reviewing information, and I read all of it through in the other video, though this was proposed, it was not fully adopted. Okay, it was not enacted. Um, it died before it became law in their state, which would have been nice. Okay, this is one of the reasons why I tell you guys you have to vet the information before because people send me stuff and they don't fully vet it. Or also, it's they may also not know what they're looking at. They just read it and it sounds good. Here, Wolf, well, I have to vet it. I can't just put out misinformation. It has to be, whether it's good, bad, helps us or hurts us. I have to bring you guys the truth. That is what it is. And to all the departments out there that like to watch my videos, hello, hello, hello. Uh, appreciate you guys as well. Um, because the majority of you guys are good. Some of you guys, not so much, and that's just the way it, it goes. So what I find interesting about um, the government and the state governments is it's interesting how uh, at least the main federal government, they're good, but they've got some crap in there too. Unfortunately, wherever there's people, there's bound to be some corruption and whatever else. Now, the states, on the other hand, they're just a straight-out for-profit corporation, and they're legally foreign to the United States of America. But in general, law as a whole, especially here, was supposed to be set up, and it was at one point in time until the greed and corruption crept in from the various owners, the puppet masters, and a majority of them aren't even on this continent. Or on this continent. Yeah, they're, they're overseas. Those are the real handlers for what's going on here. Why do you think that, uh, you know, things that are legal here are illegal over in Europe? Weren't they supposed to be the bad guys? But yeah, because the bad guys don't want to eat crap and whatever else. Now, this is all educational, informational purposes only. So you do your own fact, uh, fact checking and uh, vetting of information. But, uh, well, I've already done mine. So it's interesting how the system was set up here uh to say f you to england and the queen f you to the you know uh uh old money over over the big pond f you to the you know certain religious aspects that were in control of certain things and yet here we are with that same system that left those places and said f you are now the oppressors. It's it's interesting, Mr. Powers, that the very system that they freaking ran from are now the very evil system themselves. <laughs> so let's take a look and see what they had to say. Let's get back to it. All right, hello. Thank you for using the Department of Transportation's websites. All persons operating. Now, here's how they always have to do it. But you have to listen to what they're saying. All persons. Now, we know the word person means a living person on the federal level now, for the most part. But on the state level, a person is a considered a business, an entity, a trust, so created by the state. Hmm. So all persons operating, oh, there you go. So all businesses operating, meaning in, in it for commerce, vehicles on public roadways in this particular state are subject to the state's statutes. Well, I'm not a business. I'm not for profit. And my vehicle is a private conveyance. So I don't, haven't heard anything you said that mentions me, but cute. Nice try there. So cute. Mm -mm -mm. Which, defined, which defines vehicles are subject to registration. So if you're subject, then you are to these things. And if you're not, you're not. Term is not specifically defined by statutes are the sole purview of the department to interpret. Please see sections code 341.04 for registration requirements 
in code 340.01, definition of words and phrases used. Otherwise, if you want to pursue things further, contact your state representative, which is why you guys should be telling your states. So you guys really should be going out there and copying New Hampshire's 2018 um, legislation piece and be sending those out. Don't worry about the affidavits necessarily. Copy that New Hampshire code and send it to them and tell them this is what you guys want in place. You guys have to do it. You are the you are the 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 um the state citizens and the nationals. You guys are the power. If you guys don't put pressure on them, they won't have it adopted. They don't have it adopted directly in my state. So guess what? My butt needs to be doing too. Copying that New Hampshire legislation piece, maybe adding to it, removing it a little bit, and sending it to them. You want this adopted. You want this looked at. Now, there's, as we know, there are ways already out and about from what they have in there because they have to provide a remedy because they don't and cannot control the private whatsoever unless you're doing damage to another human being, denying them of their rights or something criminal. So all the remedy you're going to find is going to be on your legislative site or Google search your state, okay, state of whatever. You can type in legislative code. And you can look up foreign registered vehicles or private registered vehicles, non-resident vehicles, non-resident registration. Look up those individual terms on Google or directly on your legislative website. And of course, then they give me other like little, you know, stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. So, all right. So I'm going to go and take a look at Click on the links they showed, and then I'm going to defer to how and what it really, sh what they really should have sent me. Okay. So, words and phrases as as, as defined. Notwithstanding, an owner means with respect to a vehicle that it is leased to a leasee for a period of more than one year. The leasee, the vehicle, the purpose of the registration under this chapter. So even in that, it's kind of funny. I don't know if they helped me or not, but in this case, this particular state's definition of owner means somebody who's leasing a vehicle. I'm not leasing a vehicle. I own it. So that's interesting. Okay. Next section says operation of vehicle after suspension, revocation, or cancellation of registration. Okay. So it says that you can use since prohibitation, no person may operate or knowingly permit the operation of a motor vehicle. We know what the definition of motor vehicle is for commerce. If the registration for that vehicle is suspended, revoked, or canceled under title, these titles, blah, 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 blah. Penalties. Yeah, okay, we got the penalties. But it, now they're giving you the, a way of defense. It says defenses for that. If... It is a defense to violation of the per that if the person did not know, had no reason to know that the vehicle registration was suspended, revoked, or canceled at the time of the violation. So you can use that. You can say, I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay, but now let's get to the other part that they highlighted. That's a larger section. It might take me a minute to skim read through here. Please bear with me. No person may operate, no owner may consent to being operated on the highways of this motor vehicle in the state, blah, 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 so much is paid. The vehicle is registered in this state, so that's why you have to remove your registration. Registered in a different, well, different state altogether, not any of the state ofs.
Okay, then it's got a, it says the vehicle is exempt from registration. Exempt from registration under these codes, a complete application for registration of the vehicle, including evidence accompanied by fee delivered. Okay, so I'll have to come back and I'll have to check out that section to see what, except for registration under this or that, a complete application, okay? Notwithstanding, a vehicle may be operated by a private person. So here you go. After the date of purchase of the vehicle by the person or after the date the person moved to this state, if application for registration except for registration under these codes and certificate of title has been made for the person otherwise complies within the applicability requirements of the section. So they're telling you a private person can in fact operate. This is why you guys, we got to read the codes, man. I haven't even seen this section. I went to the other ones that were um, uh, better than this, but okay. So it says right here, you can operate as a private person after the purchase of the vehicle by the person. And before the registration, if you don't get it registered, it says all vehicle subject. Okay. Well, subject means if it's supposed to be, which are who, uh, mail carriers, police officers, anybody who works for the state, state owned vehicles, they have to at least be acknowledged your city municipalities, stuff like that. If the vehicle is owned by a lessor or vehicles or and leased, so yeah, that doesn't apply. Okay, do not violate. If you do violate, okay. Okay, so then here it says when vehicles exempt from registration. Oh, yeah. The vehicles operate in accordance with the provisions exempting non-resident or foreign registered vehicles from registration. Boom. Pow. There you go. It's all in their codes. So I guess they did kind of put me on the path. They ain't going to do it for me, but they got me in the, inside the party. Now, what you do inside the room is up to you. But yeah, this is it. These are the codes we need right here. Done deal. Thanks for playing. A vehicle is a trailer or semi-trailer used exclusively for the transportation of farm machine implements, pr produce, supplies on a farm or between farms. So I'm just, dude, there's 20 of these. I read you the first one before. That's the main one. The vehicle is repaired, salvaged vehicle. So maybe that's why a lot of people out there go get a salvage title. It's salvaged. So that's considered salvaged, or if it's considered junked. The vehicle is a motor bicycle, electric bicycle or bicycle. So those don't need to be. Golf carts. Wood harvesting slasher. A vehicle is a manufactured home. Lightweight utility vehicle. Snowmobiles, all-terrain vehicles, electric scooters, personal delivery devices. Now, what could personal delivery devices? Now, they don't define that. So in my particular state, I could use that one. Hey, mine's a personal delivery device under section 341.0585. Uh, it doesn't need to be. It's exempt. Optional registration. A vehicle owned by a non-resident, which would be me, which is not subject, but could be subject to registration if owned by a resident. So it's optional. Special vehicles.
mobile air conditioning service. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna go back up and, and look for the section that they said, except for registration under that and that. Okay, so everything keeps pointing me to this next section. So I got to go check this. Okay. All right. So we now know that if you read your codes, it tells you how to set your vehicle up, what to call it. Now we know that you should put it in the trust and then move it forward. But see now the spot in here that I didn't specifically tell them I was a non-resident. So what did they do? They pitched me towards being a resident taxable US citizen who should register the vehicle. But they put me in the section, if you do enough reading, you can find it. So in this one, as I've done this video before, this is sub chapter three, now they have it here under registration, taxation, and exemption of non-residents. I did a Google search for non-resident vehicles, foreign owned vehicles, private vehicles, and that's what, get, with the name of my state, and that's what got me to this key section here. So in here, in this particular section, 341.40, exemption of non-residents, one word, and foreign-registered vehicles. So you might have to play with the words and do your searches, but you need to get this information. Get your vehicle in a private trust, close out everything, give them back their stuff, create your own plates, make your trust an irrevocable private trust or foreign trust, foreign registered vehicle, create your foreign registration, So here it says one, except as to foreign owned vehicles required by 341.70 to be registered in the state. So there are some foreign vehicles that are supposed to be registered in the state for certain reasons. It then says any vehicle that is registered in another jurisdiction. So they're not going to tell you straight out. You have to be able to interpret the information. Any vehicle that is registered in another jurisdiction, meaning private, is exempt from the laws of the state providing for the registration of the vehicle if all of the following applies. So to try to trap you, they try to lay out as many little things that possibly might jam you up. So it says, so here they could get me, and this is why, you know, even when I did, when I was doing this years ago, I didn't have this, so I was technically wrong, but they didn't want the fight in those days, so they let it go. It says, A, the vehicle carries a registration plate indicating the registration in the other jurisdiction. So to my dear police officers out there, if a person has a private plate with the name of where it's registered, they're operating privately, but their vehicle still should be registered, have paperwork to prove it. Now, understand, police officers, because one of my good friends is a police officer, or actually he's retired now. Um, he didn't know this information, and he was like, wow, I never knew that. So I'm looking out for you guys as far as this. So don't message me saying I don't like cops, okay? I've got friends and family who are. But you guys can actually be sued under the Constitution. The Constitution says you do not have the right to stop somebody who's operating their vehicle privately. So if the vehicle is not registered to the state you are policing in, you can be sued in your private and personal capacity. Contact me if you want to know how to protect yourself, because I look out for everybody. And no, I'm not going to give you special weird or some screwed up information. I don't belong to the bar. I'm not going to screw you guys over. I don't do that. Truth is the truth. My information can, can be as time tested and proven. Matter of fact, the law right here states it. Okay? So that's the first part of it. But the second part, the vehicle is owned by a non-resident. 
Well, remember, if you had the ability to claim yourself as a resident using your legal name, which is your name in all caps, then you are, in fact, a resident. When you change your name with your own person, you create your own private ID, you create your own trust with a as an irrevocable trust, and it's private. That trust is a non-resident. It owns the vehicle. Now, this does not make people above the law. You cannot still yet go around speeding and disobeying the speeds, the signs and endangering people. They can still take your vehicle. The Department of State can still crush your passport card. So for those people who have been out there getting their hands slapped, don't come back to me later on. Well, I was doing right to travel and I was fine. Well, let me see the ticket. Oh, you were doing 20 over, 30 over. Yeah, you're endangering people's lives. So you still have to abide by general safety, okay? And and don't hit me up for a consultation when you've done those things because I will not defend you. And I don't do court cases anyway. And you might be endangering my loved ones or friends. So you're no different than the, the bad cops out there who do the bad stuff. I got me a little bit of power. I'm going to try to do me some stuff now. Take that, copper. No, you sound, you sound like a moron and a child, an infant and a belligerent and a combatant, and you're making the good cops' lives harder. This is why they don't want you guys to have all have half this information, because you guys can't self-govern. Now, to the ones out there with the good cops who know what's going on, and, and to those cops who don't know what's going on, ask your partners about this. Ask the chief of police. Ask your commanding officer privately about it. Or just watch my videos. It's right there. I don't hide nothing. Here's the difference. Your bosses are hiding this information from you. Did you guys know that you guys are also private citizens when you don't have a badge on and you know what, what's going on? Yeah. See, I don't hide it from you guys. They hide it from you because they fear you guys knowing the, knowing the truth. But let's go on. I digress. So. A vehicle must have a registration plate indicating the registration of the jurisdiction that is private or foreign on the top. It's going to be your trust name. The vehicle is owned by a non-resident. I would create an affidavit declaring yourself with this private name as being a non-resident. Uh, the third one, C, the jurisdiction in which the vehicle is registered allows, allows vehicles that are registered in your state to be operated tax-free. So yeah, I'm not subject to it, but yeah. And the last one, D, the vehicle is operated in accordance with the rules adopted by the secretary based on the gross weight of the vehicle. So you cannot have a tank. You cannot do this with a tanker or a big commercial truck. Okay, that's commercial. You're damaging the roads. You're, 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 you have to pay for that. And then their extensions would be 1M, Foreign owned and operated vehicles entering the state have special equipment or body. Nope, don't need that. Two, if the owner of the vehicle exempted under Section 1 or 1M moves to the state, okay, or if the vehicle's purchased, it purchased. So when they say moves to the state, what they legally mean here is that you then become a resident. You sign up for things under your legal name as a resident then you cannot have your stuff in that resident name. You got to keep it in the trust. Legally, then you have not moved to that state. Or if the vehicle is purchased or leased by a resident, the vehicle immediately becomes subject to the laws of this state. So there you go. So now you guys can see the, uh, the, the, the they have to do their job, but they do not have to directly show you the information. You have to be competent enough. Okay? Now, I am competent in a lot of this, is why I've been able to be lawyers and judges and things of that nature. And no, I will not do your court cases. Otherwise, I would just have to charge you nearly as much as a uh, lawyer would. And then I would do the same thing. I wouldn't be able to... Um, uh, give you guys any guarantees. Wouldn't show up. It would be just, this is what I would do. Okay. So, but 
I will be making videos, which were where I will be giving you potential information, education that you guys can then apply as you see fit. I will not guide you through these things. You have to get off your lazy A Z Z Z E Z Z Z Z Z and do these things for yourself. You got to get your feet wet. Why? Because you need to feel the burn of what it's like to fight for your life, for your freedom, for all these things. Because if you don't, then they will continue to take them from you. The American way is to fight for your rights and your freedoms. Would you not agree with me, Department of State, and all the rest of you guys who like to watch my channel? If you want it and you know what it is, fight for it. If you need something easy, then and hand it to you, then along with that comes the fact that you have to be subservient and subject to their statutes and codes. Because see, codes and these legal things, these state laws and whatever else, are there for people who cannot govern themselves accordingly. They cannot, they operate as belligerents. So this isn't for everybody. You will have to work on it. You will have to do some things on your own. Nobody can hold your hand. But once you have the skill and you understand it, now you can operate properly. So that's it, guys. That's it for that particular video. We are done here. Um, now that we've cracked the code, there's really not a whole lot more unless something new pops up. So I'm not going to continue to be the dead horse. Once we have the, the wheel rounded, can't make it more round. So we will continue to move on with other things, places that the average person uses and needs on a daily basis to operate in the private, should you desire to do so. Otherwise, this channel is not for agents. It's not for U.S. citizens. It's for those people who are born here privately around the world and want to operate and continue to be private. Though, if you are a U.S. citizen, you're welcome to watch. Obviously, I can't stop any of you guys from watching it. Um, I guess I could turn the whole channel private and then just say, well... You know, pay me a monthly fee if you want all this information from here on out. But no, because that would be a dick move, right? Dick move, Banner. So some stuff is paid. Most stuff is free. So I ask you guys for donations and support any kind of way you can, even if it's just sharing the information or hitting a thumbs up. All right. But if you have the financial means you want to support, you can also go to Black Site 32 and there is a donation page up there. You can make a one-time donation of any size you want, whatever is within PayPal's limits. And uh, it could be monthly. And still yet, not one millionaire who watches my channel has sent me even 100000 hasn't mailed me a check, nothing. I mean, if you're a millionaire and you want to send me a million dollars, quarter million, 100000 100, 500 because you got it. I'll give you my post office box and you can mail it there. And it better cash. It better not be no fake check. Because <laughs> I will have the, I've already had that happen before. So now I always make sure that the bank uh, clears and, and uh, verifies the check before any funds are withdrawn on there. All right. So that is it. Um, the weather started to change, so dress appropriately and accordingly. Take care of yourselves, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Wolf's out. Don't forget to support me on all the other channels, too, if you can. Peace.